will be on the second poem by Whitman, which is, uh, as I said to you before, really, this is a very interesting elegy written on the death of um, President Abraham Lincoln, the president who was killed, assassinated, um, uh, because or and I think as a result of the Civil War, the American Civil War in 18, 1865, he was shot dead in Washington. And of course, he was the president. Uh, and the idea uh, really here in this poem, it's, it's, um, it's a strong elegy to say this is what uh, the question of race and racism really is very clear. Uh, here and if I start sharing with you the poem, uh, you can see um, that this poem really is an amazing example uh, again of Whitman's, um, you know, depiction and romanticization, if you like, uh, of uh, the idea of death, if you like, and to some extent uh, the effect of uh, racial difference. I think as it clearly, it, it clearly led tragically and strongly and in a dev devastating way led to more than five years uh, civil war in America, which killed many, many people. And uh, Whitman um, here is talking about um, Lincoln, uh, as I said, really in a very, uh, you know, nice elegy, romantic at the same time, sad, you know, really melancholic, full of imagery and full of imagination. And yet, at the same time, it's quite realistic because it's talking about this man, Lincoln. It's really celebrating his, his figure, his, his stature as a very sort of really was courageous uh, American president who decided, if you like, to lead the nation to a civil war to stop, to stop slavery, really. The war started because of slavery, and he, um, he was fighting against slavery. And remember, um, you know, the government, mostly the government um, and the control of things was partly in the north, uh, part of America, but the owners of the slaves were mostly in the southern parts of the states where plantations were, you know, multiple and people needed workers and farmers to farm and work, if you like, as you know, maybe, or we shall see really miserably in these farms. So that's why uh, Lincoln and his people mostly in the in the north were against slavery and that's why this war really started between north and south you know southern people wanted to keep slaves whereas people in the north they say no that's enough slavery and here really um, uh, Whitman is uh, celebrating and really uh, idealizing if you like uh, in a sense, really, um, I should say, again, even idealizing this figure, uh, really, uh, Lincoln. And as you can see, the poem is quite, uh, again, the same way uh, as we see in the format before. The same kind of format, uh, Whitman writing, again, in short sections, longer sections, shorter sections, and no rhyme, no stability or you can see here, there's really no fixed style. And sometimes keeping and, uh, you know, uh, doing in, in, a, in a sort of deliberate way, showing us uh, the way he wants rhythm in the poem. But sometimes it, it's clear and sometimes really it's not. And again, you know, you can see here, as I said, this irregularity about the whole whole thing of this poem. Again, it's a long poem, uh, to some extent long poem, but it's really easy to understand. In the same way, uh, when you read it, it's, um, you know, simple language, 
very rarely, very rarely, you know, difficult language or metaphorical language or ambiguous language. He's telling a story how, you know, the body of the president was carried away or was carried from Washington to where he was buried um, in, in, in Illinois, as we shall see here, as I, I think uh, I um, showed you. Somebody is asking, somebody is asking on WhatsApp. Come on, girls, what's wrong with you? Oh, oh, this is something else. It's okay. Now, um, uh, the idea really I was trying to say here is um, the, the poem, yes, looks looks a bit long, or rather long, but uh, it's really easy to follow. And uh, we will see uh, as much as we can here today to see really uh, this uh, poem, what, it, what, what really he, is he sort of saying throughout it. Now here again, I gave uh, a small summary. Actually, I did not send it to you, this summary. It's, I did it for, um, you know, for my own purpose to sort of remember the main point really I want to say here. Again, I got this from different places on the net, to be honest with you, and I, I copied it here, you know, just for my, for my own uh, purpose here, for the quick reference that I need to sort of uh, be able to highlight some of the points which are really interesting. So the poem called When Lilacs Last in the Doorway Bloom, you know, lilacs really, it's a kind of flower. Um, and in fact, uh, there's a song really, we use the same word in Arabic, Leilaki. I don't know, Leilaki or Leilaki, which is really, it's a kind, it's like, it's, it's a very nice, I don't know, um, if I, uh, if I, let me check, I, uh, I will uh, check this, um, uh, let me see. Actually, I'll try to show you the, the picture of uh, lilac um, as, yeah, it's, yeah. Now, let me see if I can. Um, no, where is it? It's really, it's, it's, it's a lovely flower. I don't know if I can see it here. No, let me see if I can, if I can copy some of this. No, they say copy, save image as, let me see. Yeah, I'll save it just, just for a second. Wait for me, please, don't. Don't go away. Yeah, it's safe. Let me see. Yeah. I don't know if we have it here, maybe in this country, but it could. Right, now I can show you this, the, um, the picture.
Yeah, can you see it? Hello? Yes, doctor. Do you have this in here in this country, do you know? It's called lilac. I don't think. Even in Arabic, we say Laylaki and Laylak. Yes. The same the, word we have. Huh? The name is familiar, but the the flowers. Uh, the I, I think Fairuz Fairuz uh, uh, has a song to to say about the Laylaki. Uh, it's, it's really a very lovely kind of flower we have it in Syria. It's really a lovely uh, color. Look at the color and the contrast between you know the flower itself and the red and so here it seems that in america this is again one of the signs of really of beauty if you like maybe i will i will copy this uh, at the beginning of the poem before i forget but really this is an interesting thing to see how uh, you know the poet here is using this image to symbolize to say that at this time when this flower blossoms, you know, during springtime or early springtime or in winter time, and the the death of uh, of uh, the president, and really he's comparing this in a very sad way, you know, uh, when people die, you know, you try to put and put some flowers on their graves, and the symbolism here we see this. And I think this is a lovely uh, image. That's why I wanted to show you that, really, because it's quite interesting. Now, can you see, still see my my uh, my uh, screen here? Yes, doctor. And yes. The writing, I mean, the 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 writing, not the flower. No, no. We see the flower picture. No. Yes. The flower. Ah, you see, because I'm switching between, yeah, you see, I'm switching between one to one, so it's not there. So that's why I have to stop sharing this, and then I'll, I'll go and share again. You see, this is, this is the funny thing about uh, this business of uh, distant learning. Maybe there is a, a way, but may, I'm not uh, sure that I know it now. But I will learn. I will learn later. Now you can see the, the screen again. The analysis. Huh? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So notice here what I'm saying. This is it. Can you? Yeah? Make, can you make it bigger? I mean the page. Oh, the page. Oh, I see. Oh. oh. Um. Let me see. How can I enlarge this? Yes. Wait a minute. Oh, thumb down. Of. Wait a minute. It's it's down. Sorry. On the corner of the screen. <laughs> you are you are amazing. What where where I can't find it. At the no. bottom, no, there's it's there. Uh, those no. yes, this one. Oh 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 <laughs> you are Thank amazing you. people. Yeah, can you see it now? <laughs> yeah yeah you know we are all we are always learning we are we are all people unlike you <laughs> you are amazing yeah so really really this is the poem here as you can see it's it's um, he's talking here about the time when this uh, uh, you know the death of this king notice this is an elegy on the death of abraham lincoln though it never mentions the president by name like most elegies it develops from the personal the death of lincoln and the poet's grief to the impersonal that is the death of all of you meaning people or death itself or again say from an intense feeling of a grief or of grief to the thought of reconciliation because later on we shall see because he gives the meaning of reconciliation that that yes we are fighting now but this fighting after the end of this war we will be back again into one nation we should reconcile and be one nation again 
So death here, meaning the death of the president, means the rebirth, the rebirth of a new nation. Really, this is the idea of the thought of reconciliation. Notice, the poem, which is one of the most or the finest Whitman ever wrote, is a dramatization of this feeling of loss, the feeling of losing the president. And again, as we said, like when we say, even in Arabic, even we say the sense of when you, uh, when we say a martyr, when people die and sacrifice for their own nation. Now, you sacrifice for somebody or you sacrifice for your nation, you die physically, but your nation will prosper. And that's the meaning of sacrifice, really. And this question here, when we mean by uh, the sense of loss and the sense of uh, life later on. Now, notice this elegy is grander and more touching than Whitman's other two elegies on Lincoln's death. Uh, again, we say he, he wrote other uh, poems called Oh Captain, My Captain, and the other one called Hushed Be the Camps of Today or the Camps Today. Again, the form here is elegiac. That is, it's really, uh, you know, some of these forms, it's easy. Although this poem really, normally elegies are not written like this. Normally elegies are written in shorter, sh sorry, shorter stanzas, smaller sections, easier, really uh, in, in general. Elegies are always written in shorter, uh, smaller, four or maybe, uh, maybe tetrameter, iambic tetrameter, not even pentameter, or sometimes even trimeter, meaning short lines, unlike Whitman. As I said, Whitman, uh, as I told you even last time, you know, he's a funny, really, man in the way he writes this long, long, run-on lines of poetry, which you know, in, in, in so many ways, it's very peculiar of him. Now, Abraham Lincoln, as you can see, was shot dead, was shot in Washington, D.C. on April 14, 1865, and died the following day. The body was sent by train from Washington to Springfield, Illinois. So this is the poem is talking about this procession, taking the body from Washington, from Washington, the, the capital, to Springfield, a small town in, in Illinois. This? Sorry. Um, as it crossed the continent, it was saluted by the people of America. Women has not only Sorry, Whitman has not only men and women, but even natural objects saluting the dead man. Um, as you can see, he, he's saying, or here, this brief note, saying that uh, Whitman said that everything in this country, you know, trees, rivers, roads, cities, buildings, sky, clouds, stars, everybody is you know, saluting the dead body, saying goodbye and showing respect to the dead man, the dead president. And really here, uh, this, uh, I say, this poem is maybe divided into three main cycles or three main sections. As you can see, the first cycle of the poem comprising sections from one to four, as we shall see. And this, uh, as I will read them for you quickly, but I'll read this for you now, just to put you in the scene, uh, presents the setting in clear perspective. You know, he talks about the surroundings and the settings of the poem. As spring returns, the lilac, the lilacs blossom. You see, so this is the idea. So he's talking here about springtime. The, the lilac blossom and the, or the lilacs blossom and the planet Venus nearly drooped in the Western sky, you know, Venus means Zahra, uh, the planet here is Zahra, or in, in, in Latin or in English you call Venus. And he's saying here to, to talk about this shining uh, star, even showing respect to the dead man. 
to the dead um, president. The poet here mourns the loss uh, of president, and he said, of him I love, meaning the man that I love, of course, he means the president. So he mourns the powerful Western fallen star. Again, he's saying the fallen star, he's comparing, he's comparing even the dead president to a fallen star, not just Venus as the real star, but again, he's comparing the president to a big star. Now, he said, covered by black murk in the tearful night. And he is powerless and helpless because the cloud around him will not free, will not free my soul. You know, I will, sh I will show you this later when he's comparing all this, uh, borrowing ideas about the dead body here, how now this body is, is dead and is covered with black, uh, if you like, um, again, he's saying tearful night, as if everything in the sky is crying for him. And he seems powerless, yes, because the dead body is, is body and helpless, yes, because it's dead. And again, to say, to suggest that everybody seems to be very sad for his loss. And, you know, he goes on here, I say, as you can see, who observes a lilac bush uh, is deeply affected by its perfume and believes that every leaf is a miracle here in in this as we as i showed you the the uh, the lilac uh, tree not just the flower itself but the leaves as well he said every leaf looks like a miracle the way these leaves you know are shaped he said they are shaped like hearts you know the one i showed you in a minute a minute ago yeah when you look at the shapes you mean these leaves themselves they look like hearts and really this is again symbolical to say that all hearts are sad for the loss of this man uh, abraham lincoln and he say you know a shy solitary thrush like a secluded hermit sings a song which is an expression of its most if its inmost grief so again a thrush which is like a bird really a lovely bird he said it's singing again a sad song for the for the death of this man. Again, he said it sings death's outset song of life. Again, he's notice here that again maybe the contradiction maybe you know death death's outlet song of life. <laughs> you know how can a, a death is a song of life? Uh, as I said before. This is the idea or the sense of sacrifice. You you sacrifice, like when you know this is taken even from Christian belief, uh, from the Christian belief that uh, you know uh, the idea according to Christians they believe that Christ sacrificed himself for his people, and you know the idea uh, all of all this Christian belief and so on. You know we don't care about that in a way. But this is the idea to say the question of sacrificing, to sacrifice your body, uh, yourself for the sake of others. And I think, you know, this is really touching and very, very, you know, affecting, uh, if you like, and emotional and melancholic. And I think Whitman, Whitman did this uh, in a very good way. Notice here I say again, well, it's not me really. As I said, I, I copied this from somewhere in the net. Notice this first section of the poem introduces the three principal symbols of the poem. So here we say uh, there are three main symbols in this poem, the lilac and the star and the bird. The lilac, the star, Venus, and the bird, the thrush. They are woven into a poetic and dramatic pattern. The meaning of Whitman's symbols is neither fixed nor constant, meaning they are changing here. The star Venus is identified with Lincoln generally, but it's also, or but it also represents the poet's grief for the dead. Lilacs, which are associated with ever-returning spring, because these roses, lovely roses, they mean spring, and this spring which comes every year, every year we have this, and this is what we say, ever-returning spring, are actually here we say they are symbols of resurrection. And this is what I meant by Christian sense, the resurrection, because, you know, we believe in the resurrection that Christ will come back. 
And this is the idea about, about this, because we say even Christians, they say, um, you know, they say, that's what they say, meaning according to them, you know, for after three days, that's why they say the Good Friday and Bad Friday or whatever, meaning after three days of death, he came back and all this uh, symbol. And the, the question of resurrection means to come back from death. And, you know, this idea really is, again, very symbolical in the Western Christian uh, culture. And, you know, the, the idea here, that's what he wants to say. He said, we people will, will be given more life through the death of our man, uh, Lincoln. And this is the, really what he means there. While its heart-shaped leaves symbolize love, because again these leaves and the way they look like uh, hearts, and normally you you know you symbolize love with heart, and that's why you know lovers everywhere in the world these days, uh, you know they send each other hearts, you know, and different colors. Each color means means you know means something, and this is really funny. But this is it. Again, notice here the purple color of the li lilac. We've seen the color, it's purple, really. Again, it's very, very, really indicating here. Notice here, the purple color of the lilac indicate the passion of the crucifixion. You know, this is the idea. It means, you know, this color itself, as I said, indicating the crucifixion means the death of Christ as they believe. Of course, remember, we, be, we, we, we people, uh, we Muslims, we say, um, you know, um, you know, non Muslim evident, of course, according to our belief that uh, that cross masalabu wala katalu. But this is it, you know, this is the idea. But this idea here is highly suggestive of the violence of Lincoln's death, meaning how they killed this this man, you know, uh, the president. The the bird is the symbol of reconciliation and death, and its song is the soul voice death's outlast outlet song of life means that out of death will come renewed life this is what i mean sacrifice you die for the sake of others and life will come from and through death and that's what he means death is described as a dark mother death is described as a dark mother and notice here mother because mothers give birth to children to give birth to life and this is really the idea or again notice or a strong deliveress and i think this is interesting deliveress from deliver and here notice deliveress for the female and i think really whitman is a nice uh, gave us here really very good word here for you ladies i think you should be happy with this notice here strong deliveress meaning you you women uh, will deliver life forever. You will always give life to us, uh, you know, men, um, women, everything. And I think this is really lovely uh, to say this idea. Notice, which suggests that it is a necessary process for rebirth. The emotional drama in the poem is built around the symbolic framework. Framework, the continual recurrence of the spring season symbolizes the cycle of life and death and rebirth. And I think this cycle is always true because always we say, you know, spring, life, new life, summer, autumn people die and winter die and spring they come back to life and then the summer and so on. And this cycle will go on and on and on and on forever. And really this is, this is the meaning of life. And that's what we mean here, the circle of, of life. So this ever returning spring, we always we will always always have spring we will always have spring which should care in line three and are repeated in line four emphasize this idea of rebirth and resurrection the date of lincoln's assassination coincided with easter and this is it the way the way i say to you easter in christian in christian you know in christianity easter is the time is the time when they think that christ will come back from death uh, and that's really the idea here Notice Easter, the time of Christ's resurrection. These two elements provide the setting 
of the poem in time and in space. And here I give for you the, you know, or we have here the second section, and I will come to it when, when we read the poem. But really, it is very interesting and it's very easy to follow. And I will, I will uh, again, go back and read it with you, uh, uh, hopefully all of it. So the second stanza here of the poem describes the poet intense grief for the dead. Each line begins with O as an explanation or exclamation, which is like the shape of a mouth open and well. You know, the way he had to say that even the writer using or, you know, using the word O, O to, to indicate sadness and, and so on. And here, if I go back, to the to the be beginning of the poem uh, as you can see here yeah so notice when lilacs last in the doorway bloomed when lilacs last in the doorway loom bloomed and the great star early early dropped or i should say drooped really because because it should be with with bloom because really the word here bloomed and drooped. And the great star early drooped in the western sky in the night. I mourned. I mourned. Somebody um, asking permission or something? Yeah. You see again, again here. I, yeah. You see here the idea he's saying about you know during this. He said during the, this time when you know when lilacs, you know are 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 born again back in the doorway. He said everywhere. He said door dooryard, meaning everywhere around your our houses, our gardens. You know, life are you know is coming back through these lilacs, through these lovely roses of uh, lilacs, and he said, you know, the early, the great, the great star early drooped, as if to say that the star even in the sky is is sad because the word drooped means you know lowering down or bending, as if to say feeling sad for the loss of this man. And they said, I mourned, meaning I feel sad and yet shall mourn with ever returning spring, meaning I will always, I will always feel sad at this time because this is the time when they killed this man. Every spring, at every spring, I remember when he was killed. And that's what he said, ever returning spring, Trinity sure to me you bring. Trinity, he means, you know, the three, uh, the question here of Trinity, the idea of, again, the Christian belief in Trinity, meaning God, um, or as they say, Son, Father, Son, Holy, Holy Spirit. You know, this is the question of Trinity, a thaluth. And as you know, we as Muslims, we don't believe in a thaluth because uh, that's not uh, according to our religion is not is not true and is not it cannot be um lilac he said at this time you know you know every spring every time every year this idea will come back to us lilac blooming perennial and drooping star in the west and thought of him i love meaning every year every time every year this time comes and i will remember this man that i love lincoln the man that I will be thinking of, and he died at this time, and I, the man that I love, and, and I will never forget. You can see here this really, um, Whitman is, uh, is expressing deep, deep love and deep feeling and deep emotion about, you know, trying to recapture the, the moment of the man's death. And in the next, in the next, uh, sorry, the next, um, the next stanza or section, again, he's using O oh, to, again, as I said, to, to refer to sadness. O oh, powerful western fallen star, 
O shades of night, O moody, tearful night, O great star disappeared, O the black murk that hides the star, O cruel hands that hold me powerless, O helpless soul of me, O harsh surrounding cloud that will not free my soul. I think it's very easy, you can see here, very simple. See, you know, I'm being, he said, I'm very sad and, and you know, I'm being controlled and being tearful. And my mood, he said, I'm covered with sadness and, you know, absolutely dark, miserable night. And I feel so sad and so helpless, so powerless, so miserable for the loss of this man. As if to say, he said, the whole world is dark and the whole world is miserable because we have lost this man. And that's why he said, the falling star. As if to say, this night is so dark, no, no stars anywhere. Uh, to such suggest, to suggest misery and sadness. And, you know, in a way, I like this because this, this looks uh, poetic to me, you know, to say something really positive about Whitman. I think, uh, you know, this is here really very, to me, I think at some, to some extent, this sounds uh, nice and very poetical in a way. And in the, next, uh, in the next one, you can see here, again, he goes back in number three. In the doorway fronting an old farmhouse near the whitewashed pollings stands the lilac bush, all tall growing with heart-shaped leaves of rich green, with many a pointed blossom, blossom, uh, sorry, blossom rising delicate, with the perfume strong I love, with every leaf a miracle, and from this bush in the dooryard, with delicate colored blossoms and heart-shaped leaves of rich green, a sprig with its flower I break. You know, he's really a funny man. He's, he's saying here, I took one leaf, I took one little, one little branch of this, uh, of this tree, which is the lilac tree. And he said lilac bush. You know, the word bush means a small, you know, a collection of maybe two, three, four, or five, or I don't know how many uh, trees uh, growing together. We call this bush um i don't know um, do you know the word in arabic in oman what do you say for a bush maybe it in is Omani, husun? no 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 not husun. Husun is husun. bush is something else maybe doctor you mean that what you mean what? Uh, this is Arabic? You said? Omani. Oh, say it again, please. <laughs> Don't worry. I, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, maybe this is Oman. I don't know. Maybe. Anybody else? Any, any words? Sorry? Wafa? Wafa? Yes. Wafa Bashir, where are you? Yeah, you are a poet and you are, you draw and you are a good musician and all this. <laughs> no, no, not me. Oh, oh. I, we have. Uh, oh, sorry. Do we have Wafa Bashir here? I think I have Wafa here, don't I? Yeah, but I am not Wafa Bashir. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah, Wafa. Oh, maybe Doctor, this is, maybe. Yeah? Maybe he means a noir. Or Shugayrat Sagira. Yeah, you are explaining it. But in Arabic, in Syria, we have one word. We say... Doctor? Daghla. Do you know Daghla? Daghla or Daghla? Yeah? 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 Uh, it's um, a standard word. Dahl is a standard word. Yeah, 
And even we say al-hirsha, al-hirsh or al-hirsha, that's what we say in colloquial Syrian Arabic. I don't know if it's, it's classical, I must check. Al-hirsha or al-hirsh or al-daghla or al-daghl really means bush, meaning, meaning a lot of trees could be one or could be a hundred, could be three. And sometimes like you really when like in forests, we say we say a dagl or hirsh or really bush in English called bush. And he's saying here, he's saying that this lilac bush, he said, meaning a lot of trees growing there. He said, I took one one uh, spray one he said one sprig or meaning one little one little uh, you know uh, branch from that as if to say I'm taking it to put it on the grave of this man because like taking a rose or a flower and planting it on his grave do you see what I mean that's uh, the meaning of this uh, section here uh, number three uh, you know he's using all this uh, again we say the delicate the pointed rising again delicate again perfume meaning the, the the smell and the lovely picture and the lovely color and everything he said I love this and he said he said for him every every little leaf of it looks like a miracle it looks like really absolutely a miracle showing uh, it's like a, a tree of hearts that's what he said you know um, when he said heart shaped leaves of rich green means very green you know and you know he's symbolizing again in a very romantic way I think here really Whitman is interesting and very romantic and I start here really I start to like hearing here some of this romanticism and number four you can see here in the swamp in the swamp in secluded recesses you know swamp it's like what we say it's like a marsh or maybe an area around which you can find water and trees and you know in the forest and sometimes could be dangerous because it can it can be it can you know it can contain so many dangerous creatures snakes maybe whatever it's called the swamp in arabic we call it mustanqa rahel, rahel. and i think you know here maybe the word the word sorry rahel, 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 we call it no not dahl no 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 dahl means shallow means not amiq and swamp is not is not dahl. Really, the word dahl means shallow, means not not deep. Do you see? Do you see? Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm because I'm I'm showing you, um, you know, in my uh, sign language here. Um, swamp really means uh, in real the real meaning of swamp is as we say really mustanqa which is, as I said, could be, you know, a lot of water, dangerous water, dirty water, maybe deep water, but it has a lot of uh, maybe shrubs or a lot of trees or could be, could be dangerous, could contain a lot of things and could be deadly. Sometimes if you fall into a swamp, you could die because you can't go because it's, it's, it could swallow you, really. And that's why here in Arabic we say, means he is in real trouble. Okay? So here he wants to say, as if to say, we people, Americans, we have fallen into the swamp of civil war. And that's what he said, secluded recesses. Recesses means absolutely bottomless means deep and deep and deep terrible situation and again he said at this time or in this place in this area in this deep 
isolated area, secluded, because the word secluded really means isolated. A shy and hidden bird is warbling a song. To warble, warble means to sing, you know, birds. Normally, the word warble for, for birds when they sing. So he's saying here, in this deep forest, in this deep swamp, there is a shy bird. Notice here, shy and hidden bird singing, warbling. And again, he said, solely thrush. So this bird is, is what we call a thrush. Again, the word thrush could be, uh, in Arabic we say, could be, um, to some extent, people, I don't know, maybe sometimes we call it a shahroor, or could be a summun or a summan. Really, again, it's a lovely, absolutely black, lovely colored bird. Um, really, absolutely, uh, in, in English culture, in, 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 um, in other cultures, somebody coming in? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, when I, when I switch into, to, uh, to allow people in, I can't go back. You see, this is the funny thing about it. I have to stop sharing and then share again. I must uh, learn this business later. Okay, so he is here saying about this um, bird, the thrush, solitary the thrush, the hermit withdrawn himself, avoiding the settlements, sings by himself a song. Again, I think here our friend Goodman is, you know, imagining in a strange way and comparing a thrush, which is isolated, which is solitary, which is in a swamp, which is in a forest, secluded forest, and singing and in a shy way, but singing. In the same way, we have a hermit. A hermit could be like, as we say, like someone who's like a priest, someone who's like a man who feels isolated, who wants to be on his own, who is unhappy with society, who withdraws, if you like, really who, as you can see, withdraws. Born, he said, the hermit was to himself. Means someone who left society because society is so wicked and terrible and he feels he can't belong to this society. So that's why he said, you know, we have people like this. Again, I think there's a good word for Arabic. Hermit, we say, anasik. Do you know the word in Arabic, an nasik? Yes. Yeah, very good. Really, this is the word, hermit. Uh, as I said, it could be a religious figure, could be a priest, could be a parson, and could be who is really, really someone who feels that um, he doesn't belong anymore to this world. And again, he said, sings by himself a song. Again, he's like this bird, but his song is, could be a religious song because he's a hermit. He's a religious figure and he's singing for the dead man and the thrush is singing for the dead man. Again, he said, song of the bleeding throat. That's outlet song of life. So he's saying the way this bird is singing, the way this hermit is singing, it seems that they are singing the, the song of death. The, the song of birth. The song of death, but hopefully which will lead to a new life, rebirth. And that's what he said. That's outlet, outlet song of life. For we, dear brother, I know. For we, sorry, for well, dear brother, I know. If thou wast not granted to sing, thou wouldst surely die. Again, this is a quotation, it seems, that a quotation taken 
uh, it seems from somewhere by the poet to refer, maybe this is biblical reference. Again, to say, you know, we have to, we have to be hopeful and to sing this time in like in a religious sort of ceremony to celebrate the birth, to celebrate the, the rebirth, to celebrate the resurrection of a new life, I, as I think he said here. Meaning, yes, this man was killed, but he was, to us, he was a Christ figure. And to us, he gave us all life. Really, that's the meaning here. In number five, again, he, he goes back to reality. Well, maybe to nature, to romanticize again, to give us more romance. Notice. Over the breast of the spring amid cities, amid lanes and through uh, old woods, where lately the violets peeped from the ground, spotting the gray debris. Amid the grass in the fields, such each side of the lanes, passing the endless grass, passing the yellow speared wheat, every grain from its shroud in the dark, in the dark brown fields, uprisen. Hmm. Passing the apple tree blows the, of white and pink in the orchards, carrying a corpse to where it shall rest in the grave. Night and day journeys a coffin. Again, I think, notice here, again, I think here, um, uh, Whitman, I like him because he's, again, really using nice romantic, romanticism or romantic, or at least borrowing a lot of natural elements from nature. It looks like really romantic uh, poetry here a lot. When he's using, you know, images, breast, the breast of the spring, you know, I think I like this, the breast of the spring, the land amid cities, meaning Everything here, everything is saying goodbye and saluting the dead body, which is passing here to go to its grave. Amid lanes and through old woods, where lately the violets peeped from the ground, spotting the gray debris, you know, saying everywhere where now everything in this springtime, everything is growing up, is, is uh, springing up. Amid the grass in the fields, each side of lanes passing the endless grass. As everywhere you look is very green and very lovely. And where this where this man is being carried to his to his graveyard. Again, notice passing the yellow speared wheat. Again, the same thing. Every grain, every, every grain from its shroud in the dark blow. Notice again using the word shroud, as if to say everything came back from death. Everything came out of death from shroud, from its death clothes. Because the shroud, we, when, when, when people die, they wrap them in a shroud, as we say. And really here he's comparing, what is even grain, grain, He's using here really in a very nice way. Grain means the small, the small seed of wheat. You, you see what I mean here? Really, it's a very interesting and very romantic way to say, to use this image of grain being shrouded or come back of its death from, a, from its shroud. Again, saying apple trees and, you know, the white and pink and not the color and the orchards. The orchards, all these fields of trees and uh, again orchards um, in a way like cherry, like cherry orchards or apple orchards or everywhere. Again, he said, all nature is carrying this corpse, is carrying the dead body of this man, the body of Lincoln to his grave. Even he said the day and the night even. Days and nights, everything, you know, is walking, walking along with this man to his, 
to his grave. Notice, journeys, journeys, meaning as if to say, you know, everybody, everyone walks with this coffin, walks with this uh, dead man. Again, interesting and symbolical. In number, in number six, he repeats this again in the same way, really, repeating it, you know, and I'll read this for you maybe quickly because it's really clear, because it's the same thing. Notice, coffin that passes through lanes and streets, through day and night, with the great cloud darkening the land, with the pomp of the in-looped flags, with the cities draped in black, with the show of the states themselves, as of, as of great veiled women standing, with processions long and winding, and the, and the flambeaux of the night, you know, torches here, flambeaux means torches, like a torch at night to give light, with the countless torches, yeah, this is the word, torches lit with the silent sea of faces and the unburned heads, with the waiting depot, with the waiting depot, the arriving coffin, the somber faces, with dirges, with elegies, you know, dirges, songs or elegies, with dirges through the night, with the, with the thousand voices rising, strong and solemn, with the mournful voices of the dirges poured around the coffin. Meaning, you know, everybody, every, everything in this nature, people, humans, trees, flowers, days, nights, figures, you know, everything is crying, is, is saying goodbye to this man. Crying here, notice, poured around the coffin. The dim light churches, the shuddering organs, where amid this you journey, with the tolling, tolling bells, perpetual clang. To toll, really, you know, to say to give rings, the ringing bells, to, to suggest death. You know, in Christianity, if somebody dies, just they ring the bell of the church to say that somebody has died. The reference, the reference for sadness, and that's what he means, tolling and tolling, bells, perpetual, clang, clang. You know, this is the ringing of the bell to suggest, to symbolize, to indicate sadness and death. Here, here, coffin that passes, I give you, I give you my sprig of lilac. So here he said, this is when all this, I will give you my flower, which I got from the lilac tree, from the lilac bush. He said, this little, this little sprig or little branch that I give you, because this is the best thing that I can give. And I think sometimes, yeah, I mean, that's what we do. We throw flowers on, on the body of somebody is being cut to his grave. You know, this is the only thing you just throw us. A rose at his grave, you know, as a symbol, you know. And I think this is again very symbolical. And he says that in number seven, the same thing, notice. Nor for you, nor for you, for one alone. Blossoms and branches green to coffins all I bring. For fresh as the morning, thus would I chant a song for you, O oh, saint and sacred death. All over bouquets of roses, bouquets, or if you like, if you pronounce it in the English way, you know, we could say bouquets of roses, but the French we say bouquet. Of death, O oh, death, I cover you over with roses and early lilies. Again, lilies could be what's called zambak. Uh, but mostly, but mostly, and now the lilac that blooms the first. Copious I break 
I break the sprigs from the bushes. With loaded arms, I come pouring for you. For you, the coffin. For you, the coffin. All of you, oh, death. Again, I think, you know, here, um, here, he, you know, I think he's repeating the same thing. Honestly, he's repeating the same, the same thing. You know, he's talking to the man and to the idea of death. He's saying, I, I'm talking here about, you know, I have all, all these roses for you, but at the same time for you, death, because in death, we have a new life. That's it, really simple. He said, I'm bringing all these flowers, all these roses for you to give new life. And again, I think this is, this is really lovely. And as I said, melancholic and, and romantic in a way, really very romantic. That's why he said, all over, and again, he said, mourning, you know, to go back, blossoms, blossoms and branches green to, not as here, coffins, all I bring. As if to say, talking about not only one person died, but to so many people died in this war. So this is the reference to the war and the, the dying people who were killed in this war. Yeah? And I said, for fresh as the morning, I mean, these flowers really are absolutely fresh, like a morning. Thus would I chant a song, meaning I will sing for you all the time, a fresh song. I will give you fresh flowers, fresh roses, fresh lilies, fresh whatever, like the fresh of the early morning. And I think, you know, people, you know, honestly, this is true. If you wake up early in the morning after the Fajr prayers, you know, just before, just before the sunrise, maybe 15 minutes before the sunrise, if you open your window and look into the outside, really lovely feeling you can feel here. And this is his, the freshness of the morning. And as he said, oh, sane. Again, why is it sane and sacred death? You know, death, really death. We don't like to die, isn't it? But he, he's saying sane means wise and sacred. Again, muqaddas. How come? Of course, here he means really me. He, again, he goes back to the idea of the meaning of resurrection, which is the sacred death meaning the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ and the giving new life to people and society. Really, that's what he means here. All over, all over bouquets of roses. Oh, death, I cover you over with roses and early lilies. But mostly, again, the word early lilies means lilies which are very still young, meaning not open, you know, and I think this is this is very interesting again. But mostly, and now the lilac that blooms, blo uh, that blooms, sorry, blooms the first. Copious, I break, I break the sprigs from the bushes. With loaded arms, I come, meaning I, I, I brought a lot of, a lot of branches of flowers from all these bushes of lovely. Lovely flowers, lovely, as he said, uh, you know, lilacs, everything. I bring all of this to give you this coffin and to give you death. And that's what he said, loaded arms, loaded arms. Really, this is lovely, and your expression is full of. My arms are absolutely full of flowers and roses to give to you, the dead man, or the dead men, because he said coffins, not only Lincoln, but all these men who were killed in this war. All of you, all of you, oh, death. Again, he symbolizes all of this by saying death, oh, death. Ya ayyuha, ya ayyuha, al-mawt. Really here, when you say, oh, that's what it means. Really, ya ayyuha. And I think this is 
absolutely interesting, isn't it? Okay. Again, you know, please, I, I would, uh, I would uh, leave the rest for you to read and to be on your own, because really they are um, not very difficult. I mean, the language and everything is not difficult. You, you, uh, you can finish this. It's very easy to follow and to understand. You, you, you following? Hmm? Yes, doctor. Yeah, I mean, uh, we still have five or six minutes. I want to know, I have two people missing here. I have people chatting, what, do I, what are they saying? I don't have your, yeah, well, that's the old chatting, okay. Now, um, yeah. I I don't know. Uh, I will. I want to check who's here, really, because I want to know who is uh, who is absent. Okay. Now, uh, Az Zahra, please say yes when you hear your name. Hello. Um, I'm Azara. Azara Saeed. She answered in the chat. Oh, oh, thank you. please tell me because I, I can't see the chat now because I'm I'm reading from the university website the list of names. Uh, Rayan. Rayan. I've I've seen you. I've heard of you. Rothman. Yes doctor. yes, doctor. Yeah, you are here. Munira, Munira Abdullah. Yes. And Marwa? Marwa? Hello, Marwa? 